Hello students. So today we are going to start with our next lab experiment and we will be verifying the transient response analysis of series RC and RL circuit. So basically we are performing this transient analysis to verify that why the RC circuit and RL circuit charges or discharges exponentially. First we will be going for the theory and then we will be doing the same using our Tinkercad. So next we are going to find out that why the speed of charging and discharging is dependent upon the value R into C and L divided by R. So let's go on to our theory first and then we will be moving on to the experiment. So now we come on to your these two things that I just spoke that how you are going to analyze and what you are going to learn after doing this experiment. So the very first thing is, we all know that for the very first experiment, we are going for our RC circuit analysis. So you will be having a brief introduction of how your output voltage is dependent upon RC value. Here you can see that the value of RC is when you are varying the value of R and C values, you are increasing or decreasing the charging and discharging speed also varies. So we will be learning how it comes. And then we will be learning that is it true that it goes for exponential charging and discharging. So let's go on for the circuit of RC series circuit. So now we have got a series RC circuit and you all know we have to go for the differential equation, the KVL we are going to apply on this loop. So this gives us R into IT plus one upon C IT DT. Now you all have learned that now we are going to take the Laplace transform of our this equation. And so this will become V upon S equals to R into IS plus IS into divided by C into S. So now we are going to take IS out and that is going to give me RCS plus one divided by CS and here it is V by S. So that makes this S to be canceled out. And now the value of IS will be equal to V multiplied by C divided by RCS plus one. So now you all know that the coefficient of S should be unity that makes it to be RC taking out and you get S plus one upon RC. So now your this C cancels with this C and you are left with IS equals to V upon R. Now I am going to take the inverse Laplace transform of this. So this will be equal to e raised to the power of, so because we are going for one upon S plus A equals to e raised to the power of minus AT, where this value of A is equals to RC. So this will be minus RCT. So this is the value of my current that is coming. And now you should just remember one thing. Sorry, this is not, this is one upon RC. So this makes it to be minus T upon RC. So now you have to just keep in mind that your this RC is called as the time constant top. And the value of your this time constant will make your this curve to reach 63.2% either early or slow. Either the system will become fast or it will be slow. You can see that your tau will increase either if you increase your R or you increase your value of C. Increase means then time constant will increase. It will keep on moving like this. So it will be slow. If you want that the time constant, that the time taken to reach 63.2% should be very less, then you have to decrease the value of this R or C so that the value of this time constant keeps on decreasing. So this is the main thing that we are going to verify using your Tinkercad. Now for the numerical values, whatever value we are going to take in your Tinkercad, 
your r value firstly we will be taking 500 ohm and the value of c we can take 1 microfarad then we are going to vary the value of this r equal to 500 to 200 then we are going to move it to 100 then we are going to move it to 50 and then we are going to see that what are the variations in the output response we are going to verify what are the output responses increasing or decreasing the time constant when we are varying these values so let's start with tinkering so now here we are on our Tinkercad, you all know from where to get your this breadboard and I have already applied a resistance here of 500 ohm. So now we need to go for your voltage source. So here you have to go for components all and then we are going to go for your capacitor as well as the voltage source and CR. So here we go with our power supply. So I have taken this power supply here. So I will be just taking it as 10 volts. And then I require your oscilloscope, that is your CRO that you do at your labs in the institutes. And now I require capacitor. So here I will be taking a capacitor, but I have to rotate its value because we are going for the series. So here, because its endpoint, the resistance endpoint is on six number, so it will start from six here. And now we will be making the connections with the battery. So here you go with your negative connection and here you go with your positive one. Then you have to go with your CRO connection because we are going to take the output from your capacitor. Sorry. So we are going to put it like this. Okay, so now our connections are complete and now we are going to change the value and then see that what are the values, uh, what are the graphs coming out, right? So let's see what is the value of our this capacitor. So it is 100 nanofarads. Let's make the value as one microfarad because 100 nanofarad will be too low. So let's start the simulation. Here you go. Here you can see that it is coming out to be a square wave, right? So now I'm going to change the value here to microseconds per division and then start again. Here you can see the way we discussed that it is exponentially rising. You can see that you can see only a small portion here, right? So now what I'm going to do is because it is 500 ohms. No, now I am going to decrease the value of this resistance to 200. You have to only pay attention to how much of the curve you can view here, right? So now we are going to start it again. And you can see that more of the curve you are going to see here because the time constant is decreasing. So the system is becoming fast. Similarly, I'm going to vary the value here to 100 ohms and then just see the curve here you can see. So now let's make it as 50. And here you can see that the curve is getting more steeper and steeper. That means the time constant is decreasing its value. So you can also experiment with your polarized capacitor. So now I am going to take out the connections here and I am going to make the connections using your polarized capacitor. So here you have to rotate it.
because the line that you are seeing here gives you the negative terminal. So you have to make the negative terminal at the end point only. So that is why you can see here, you can just bring your pointer here and you will find that it is negative here. So that means you have to attach the positive with the end point, sixth point of your this resistor. And so I will be now making the power supply to be supplied here. And then you have got your CRO. Let's keep it here only. And the negative. So here you go with your full connection again. So now we have to just check that what's the value of over this. This is one microfarad. So let's start the simulation and see what are the results. You can see here that the curve is almost the same as the previous one. So let's now decrease its value or let's say increase its value and then see that how the curve is changing. So now I have made it 10 and the, you can see that how much less curve you were able to see. You can just see that it is, I have just made it by tenfold and just see as one microfarad here. And now just see as ten microfarads. You can see. So now I am going to vary its value to hundred microfarads, and then see what you can see. So you can see a linear line here. So now you are going to, so now you are going to change its value to nanofarads and then let's see what happens to it because we are decreasing it. So it is almost a square wave that you are getting, right? So this is for your series RC circuit. So now we are going to replace our this thing. I'm going to take out all the connection and I'm going to go for your RL circuit. But first we are have to go for its theory. I hope that now from the experiment, you have understood that why your time constant is dependent upon the values of R and C. You all have seen that as the value of R and C was getting increased, so was your curve getting more slower. And as the value of your R and C was getting smaller and so the time constant was also decreasing and the system was getting faster like this. So now let's come on to a 